we find that he was from amongst those esteemed companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was chosen for the very delicate the tremendous task of writing down the divine revelation of the Quran so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ahlamu min ummati muawiyah that muawiyah is the most tolerant muawiyah is the most forbearing from my ummah so amir muawiyah's leadership was the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it was through the outcome of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yet the time of Abir Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala who came and during his time the Muslim empire increased and stretched to 6.5 million square miles but look who the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is advising he is advising Abu Bakr and Umar radiyallahu ta'ala numa that consult Muawiyah radiyallahu an in your affairs he was loved by the sahaba he was loved by his contemporaries he was loved by the people after you know this is just all started recently you know criticizing and speaking ill of amir muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala my friends although collectively we find that the sacrifices of the companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon this ummah and upon the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are so innumerable yet we find that some individuals from this shining galaxy they excelled in their service to the deen of allah they excelled in their service especially to the ummah especially to us especially to the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than others and from this shining galaxy from these legends of islam from these champions of islam we have a great companion a great companion who was katibul wahi who was the scribe of divine revelation who was khal al mu'minin who was the uncle of the believers and i am referring to none other than the great muawiya bin abi sufyan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu such a great companion of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at the early life of muawiya we find that 5 years before the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam claimed prophethood muawiya radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was born in makka and from a very early age his parents realized and recognized that our son that our son he bears extraordinary abilities of leadership within him this is why they encouraged muawiya from a very early age to go and acquire to go and acquire knowledge uh, regarding ve in various different sciences this is why we found that amir muawiya radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in makkah was from the few people who could actually read and write from a very early age sayyidina amir muawiya radiyallahu ta'ala anhu had these extraordinary abilities of leadership within him this is why we find that when the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he migrated from makkah to madina then after 6 long years in madina the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam longed to see the kaaba <coughs> after 6 long years he longed to see the kaaba the when is the day going to come when we will be able to do tawaf around the kaaba again here there is hostility in makkah they hate the muslims abu jahal is there abu sufyan is there they hate the muslims they can't stand the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and here the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is thinking of going to makkah to perform the umrah and to see baitullah the house of allah after 6 years with a group of 14 to 1500 companions the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam set out for makkah they stopped in a place known as hudaybiyah here the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to usman bin affan who usman bin affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that oh usman you go and speak to the non believers in makkah the leaders of makkah and tell them that muhammad is coming with a group of companions and peacefully we just want to perform the umrah and we just want to go back home usman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu went to makkah he speaks to the non believers and they said oh usman we are indebted to you from the days of jahiliya from the days of ignorance you had many favors you did many favors upon us therefore we will allow you to do tawaf you can go and see the baitullah but muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not allowed to step in makkah in the meantime the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is camped in hudaybiyah with 14 to 1500 companions here the rumor comes to hudaybiyah that usman bin affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has been killed he's been martyred such was the anger of the companions 
of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And such was their compassion and love for Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 14 to 1500 one of them, every one of them said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that we will not leave Makkah until we do not avenge the death of Usman. And then they did bayah on the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And oh, every companion came. And he did this bayah on the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He made a pledge at the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the pledge that Allah refers to in the Quran. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِئُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ That Allah is pleased with those believers. Believers. Allah is pleased with those believers. Who... Who pledged at the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under the tree. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then took one of his hands and he placed it on the other hand and he said, This is the bayah, this is the pledge from Usman radiallahu ta'ala. In the meantime, the news reaches Hudaybiyah that Usman radiallahu ta'ala is still alive. He has not been killed. This was only a rumor. Usman radiallahu ta'ala came back. And a treaty was signed, a pledge was made with the non-believers that you have to go this year, you go back to Medina, you can come back next year and you can perform your Umrah then. This is the year, the seventh year of Hijrah, which is known as the Umratul Qaza. This is when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa a year after Hudaybiyah, he went from Medina to Mecca to do Qaza of the Umrah they were supposed to perform the year before. It was during this time that Sayyidina Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan radiallahu anhu, he came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and he accepted Islam at the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he sat in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He himself says that I accepted Islam when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to perform qaza of his umrah. This is when I accepted Islam. But I concealed my Islam. I concealed my iman from my parents Hind and Abu Sufyan because I was scared that I would be tortured by them. So we find that in the year 8th after Hijrah, in the year 8th after Hijrah, we find that Makkah was conquered during this time. So in the 6th, the incident of Hudaybiyah took place. 7th, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did Umratul Qaza. And in the year, the year after, the 8th of Hijrah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions went into Makkah and Makkah was conquered during this time. This was the time when the whole family of Abu Sufyan, Muawiyah, Yazid bin Abi Sufyan, Hind, Abu Sufyan, this whole family came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they accepted Islam, the whole family. This was the time when Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala says that I, I broke the news to my parents and my brother that I had already accepted Islam before them a year earlier. But I had no choice but to conceal my Iman from you, conceal my Islam from you. Why? Because Abu Sufyan at that time the father of Muawiyah bin Abi Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was one of the staunchest enemies of Islam. So much so that after the battle of Badr when Abu Jahl was slain, then the next person to take over, the commander of the non-believers was Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was the staunchest enemies of Islam but respected brothers and elders. No sooner did he come into Islam that Muawiyah Abu Sufyan Allahu Akbar. He's not just Abu Sufyan, but the whole family performed exceptional sacrifices for Islam. This is why we find that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa came to conquer Makkah, what did he say? Man dakhala, man dakhala dara Abi Sufyan fahuwa aminun. Whosoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan will be amin, will be safeguarded from us. Nothing will happen to him, no harm will come to that person. Ulama Rai Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala writes that this proclamation of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this shows how much honor Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had for Abu Sufyan that whoever enters the home of Abu Sufyan he will be amin, he will be safeguarded, no harm will come to him this shows the honor uh, and the honor of uh, Abu Sufyan in the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muawiyah radiallahu anhu he was chosen by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find that he was from amongst those esteemed companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was chosen 
for the very delicate the tremendous task of writing down the divine revelation of the Quran when Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam would bring down the Quran upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam many scribes among, around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam would write down the Quran and from amongst them we have Amir Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan radiyallahu ta'ala he would write down the Quran historians write that after Zaid bin Sabit radiyallahu ta'ala who Amir Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu spent the most time in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the service of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam writing down the divine revelation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those the scribes of the Quran Allah speaks about them in the Quran fi suhufin mukarrama marfu'atin mutahhara bi aydi safara kiram barara written on honest honored pages exalted and purified by the hands of the scribes allah mention makes mention of them in the quran the scribes of divine revelation amir muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was entrusted with this duty and this duty was such he had, he had to be in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He spent endless hours in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this enabled his character and his personality to be developed directly at the hands of the greatest reformer to evoke the face of this earth, our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He developed his character, he developed his personality, and he gave him the glad tidings. At one time, Amir Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, alongside with staying in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, writing down the Quran, writing down the divine revelation, Amir Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was also chosen by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to write down any letters, than any correspondence that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would send to the kings of the world. And historians write that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his time, he sent 165 letters. 165 letters to kings around the world calling them towards Allah and 133 of these letters were written by the hands of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala such a great companion that he says that one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to perform his wuzu and I took water for him and I helped him with his ablution the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he finished his wuzu he looked up at me in the eyes and he said, Oh Muawiyah, when you are granted leadership, then fear Allah and be just to the people. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, prophesied that Muawiyah would become a leader. Amir Muawiyah who goes on to say that when I heard this from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, I knew that a time is going to come in the future when I would be tried with the responsibility of leadership and finally events transpired and this time came and I was made the Khalifa I was made the leader of the believers I was made Amirul Mu'mineen I was made the leader of the believers so the leadership of Amir Muawiyah was prophesied by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the, the leadership of Amir Muawiyah by, was destined by Allah the Almighty this is why we find that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly nurtured Amir Muawiyah he nurtured his character he nurtured his personality and on top of that he made dua for Amir Muawiyah time and time again as related by Imam Tirmidhi in his sunan on the authority of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abi Umaira he reports the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion said Allahumma ja'aluhu hadiyan mahdiyan wahdi bihi that oh Allah guide Muawiyah make him rightly guided and guide others through him on many different occasions the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua for Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allahumma allim Muawiyah al-kitab wal that oh Allah grant Muawiyah knowledge of the Quran grant him knowledge of accounting mathematics and financial management and waqihil adab save Muawiyah from the punishment of this world save Muawiyah from punishment and on another occasion he made the dua for Amir Muawiyah Allahumma Allahumma allimhul kitab oh Allah grant Muawiyah knowledge of the Quran and wa makkin lahu fil bilad and grant Muawiyah we are leadership on the face of this earth grant him leadership on the face of this earth so Amir Muawiyah's leadership was the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was through the outcome of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we know and we believe that the duas of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
were accepted by Allah the Almighty. Such a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Amir Muawiyah was that he was not only he was loved by the Sahaba, he was loved by his contemporaries, he was loved by the people after. You know, this is just all started recently. You know, criticizing and speaking ill of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. But the Sahaba had immense love for Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. Immense love for Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. Look at the tribute that the companions are paid to Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. Once, as you know, Ummi Habiba radiallahu ta'ala anha, the sister of Muawiyah, Ummi Habiba was married to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day, he comes home and he finds Muawiyah sitting with his sister and they were talking to each other. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Ummi Habiba radiallahu anha that Ummi Habiba do you love Muawiyah? <coughs> so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asking a sister that do you love your brother? Ummi Habiba radiallahu ta'ala anha said of course ya Rasulullah he is my brother and I have immense love for him. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down from the heavens and he came down and he said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, Inna Allah wa rasoolahu yuhibbanihi that indeed Allah and his Rasul also love Muawiyah. Indeed, Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also love Muawiyah radiallahu an. Once the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was doing mashwara, he was having a consultation with Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And both of them, they could not give Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a suitable solution to an issue. They were asked for. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Bakr and Umar that go and call Muawiyah. Go and call Muawiyah. Because فَإِنَّهُ قَوِيٌّ أَمِينٌ Because Muawiyah is powerful and Muawiyah is very authoritative when it comes to counselling. And فَإِنَّهُ أَمِينٌ he is very trustworthy, he will not give you incorrect advice. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala who was born in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The issue was put forward to him and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala who gave his suggestion. But look who the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is advising. He is advising Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anuma that consult Muawiyah radiallahu anhu in your affairs. He is telling Umar radiallahu anhu regarding whom the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that if there was to be a Nabi to come after me, if there was to be a Prophet to come after me, it would be Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Such was the status and the rank of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And you already know the virtues and the status and the rank of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. After the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, the most virtuous and the most superior person to ever set foot on the face of this earth was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and that is the consensus of the whole ummah. And he is advising both of them that consult Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu in your affairs. This is why we find that in the time of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu when Yazid bin Abi Sufyan the brother of Amir Muawiyah when he was the governor of a part of Syria and he passed away. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala who had no hesitation whatsoever. And he made Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala who the governor of Sham. Umar bin Saad radiallahu anhu, a great companion. He was the governor of the area known as Homs in Syria. Homs, which is known as Hims. The area in Syria known as Homs. He was the governor of the area. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu replaced him with Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an. So the people came to Umar bin Saad and they said to him that you are being replaced by a person, Amir Muawiyah, who is very inexperienced in this field. Umar bin Saad at that time said that do not speak ill and do not criticize Muawiyah for I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with my own ears saying that oh Allah guide other people through Muawiyah radiallahu his, his contemporaries loved him. The companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had immense love for him. Allah loved him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa loved him. Allahu Akbar. 
And look at the role of Amir Muawiyah. I'm fo fast forwarding now, there isn't much time, we've only got 10 minutes left. Look at the role of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. There's so much to say, I'm just giving you glimpses from his life. When Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala was made the leader, from the time of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala, all the way up to his Khilafah, he was the governor of Sham, the leader of Sham for 21 years. And after Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala, when in the year 41 AH, he came to Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala, and he made, made, made peace with Amir Muawiyah. After the battle of Sifin, he came to Amir Muawiyah and he made peace with him and he pledged and he did bayya on his hand and he made Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala the leader, the Khalifa of the Muslims at that time and Hassan radiallahu ta'ala uh, ta when he went back to uh, Medina after making Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala the leader and after uh, doing bayya on his hand, after making peace with him when he went back to Mecca when he went back to Mecca, Medina, sorry, people started to criticize him. That why have you gone and done made peace at the hand of Amir Muawiyah? Why have you given Khilafah leadership to Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu? Hazrat Hassan, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said at that time, oh people, do not speak ill, do not criticize the leadership of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Because I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa say, that Days and nights will not cease to alternate until Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala is made the leader of the Muslims. Days and nights will not cease to alternate until Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is made the leader of the Muslims. And this is what Hassan radiallahu ta'ala said. He was loved by the companions. And how he ruled Allahu Akbar. He was the governor, like I said, for 21 years. And after he became Khalifa, the leader of the Muslims, he was there for approximately 19 years as the Khalifa, as the leader of the Muslims. During that time, Allahu Akbar, the accomplishments and the achievements of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala were just absolutely phenomenal. We look back in history, we find that during the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the Islamic empire stretched to 1.1 million square miles. We find during the time of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Islamic empire increased to 2.2 million square miles of land. Come the time of Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it increased to 4.4 million square miles of land. Uh, at the time of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because there was a lot of internal differences and internal conflicts, we found that during his time, there wasn't any futuhat, there wasn't any victories, and the Muslims did not increase in any land. Yet the time of Abir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu came, and during his time, the Muslim empire increased and stretched to 6.5 million square miles. Great countries and great nations and cities, Kabul, Afghanistan, Russia, Cyprus, Sicily, Rhodes, Crete, Kos, you know your holiday destinations, Crete, Kos, all these holiday destinations, Cyprus, they were all conquered during the time of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. 57,000, in over 57,000 places, the Islamic banner was upheld and the Islamic banner was raised and many of these different nations and this, these different countries were introduced to Islamic civilization. Islam prospered and Islam flourished during the time of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We find the narration in Bukhari of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa authentic narration where he prophesied one, one day he said that the first army of my ummah, the first army of my ummah who will fight a naval battle, فَقَدْ أَوْجَبُوا Jannah Paradise will have become compulsory for them. The first army of my ummah who will fight a naval battle, Jannah Paradise will become compulsory for them. My brother's history testifies that he was in the year 27th year after Hijra. That he was none other than Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who was the first person who came up with the idea that the Muslims need their own uh, naval operations. They need their own naval force. Why? Because Cyprus was a country which was only approximately 50 miles away from the coast of Syria. And the Romans who were in Istanbul. We had the Romans in Istanbul. And if you look at the map, you find Turkey, you find Istanbul there, Rome. 
Rome, the Roman Empire, their capital was always Istanbul, Kustuntunia. This was their capital. And we find that between Turkey and Syria, we have an island by the name of Cyprus. So Amir Muawiyah during the time of Umar bin Khattab, he said, O oh, Umar, we should start thinking about having our own naval force. Why? Because we need to take over and we need to conquer Cyprus. Because this will serve as a base in future for us to attack the Roman Empire. Umar radiallahu ta'ala wasn't too keen on the idea. And he said, and the reason for this was that the Muslims and the Sahaba, the companions were engaged already in many different b battles and many different wars. And they were already engaged on land. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala did not want to risk. This was something new for the Muslims to fight at sea. You know, a battle at sea, this was something new for the Muslims. Umar radiallahu ta'ala did not want to take the risk. Come the time of Usman radiallahu ta'ala, Amir Muawiyah again made the request that oh, Usman, give us permission and let us go and conquer Cyprus. The only way we can conquer Cyprus is that we have our own naval force. Usman radiallahu ta'ala eventually gave permission to Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala and Amir Muawiyah was the first one in our rich history. He made a naval fleet consisting of 500 ships and it was on this ship Amir Muawiyah himself also Ubada bin Samit the great companion radiallahu anh, his wife Umm Haram Abu Zar Ghifari and Abu Darda many of the companions that took part in this battle and they went on conquered Cyprus this was the first time that the Muslims ever performed a battle and ever performed a naval operation it was about this naval operation that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi gave glad tidings that the first army of my ummah who will fight a battle at sea have been promised Jannah by Allah have been promised paradise by Allah moving forward after this time after Amir Muawiyah was made leader many wars many battles took place between the non-believers and between the Muslims and now Amir Muawiyah during his time began to strengthen uh, the naval fleet and many shipyards were made in Egypt and in Syria the Muslims were investing in new technology new vessels and new ships were made Abdullah bin Qais was made the commander of the naval operations by Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala and who historians write that Abdullah bin Qais under the command of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala and who he fought 50 navy battles he did not lose a single battle and never in a battle did a Muslim drown or lose his life Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Abdullah bin Qais radiallahu ta'ala such a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam time and time again they went and attacked Kustuntunia. You know, they conquered the areas surrounding Rome, surrounding Istanbul. Because they were preparing that one day we're going to take over the Roman Empire. And these Romans, you know, they were the superpowers of the Mediterranean Sea. Superpowers. For 800 years, they were there, regarded the Mediterranean Sea as our sea. You know, we live here, this is ours. This is our home. And nobody was there to oppose them in any way. But when Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala who started the naval operations, Allahu Akbar, after Cyprus was conquered a year later, a ferocious battle took place in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea between the Roman Empire, between the Romans and the Muslims. And here we found, right in the midst, right in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, 700 ships they had, the Romans, 700 ships, armed to their teeth, full of men, full of artillery, armed to their teeth. Here Muslims came with not many ships, not many vessels and they were only half manned. Not much artillery, not much weapons with them. Why? Because the Romans knew that the Muslims are new to this game of naval battle and naval operations. So they knew that we had the upper hand. And the Muslims knew that their main strength is fighting on land. So right in the middle of battle, the Muslims made a suggestion to the, Roman, to the Romans and they said to them that why do we get off the sea and why do we fight on the land? And the Romans obviously clued on, you know, they clicked on and they did in car, they said no chance, you know, we're here now, we're going to battle here. But Allah Akbar Ajeeb, you know when a person is on taqwa, when a person fulfills the commandments of Allah, when a person lives his life according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then the help of Allah comes down in every way. Right in the midst of battle, 
in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea against a ferocious opposition. 700 ships armed to the teeth. Muslims here, Hoffman ships. Allahu Akbar. The genius of the Muslims came up with the idea. Look, if you don't want to fight with us on the land, then what we're going to do is we're going to make a battlefield in the midst of the Mediterranean. What they did is they lashed all their ships together, all their vessels together, and they made a mini floating battlefield in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Allahu Akbar. And these Romans, when they saw this, they were absolutely astounded and shocked. Now what is going on here? And they were unable to penetrate the Muslims. So therefore the Muslims, after one and a half day of bloody battle, the Muslims picked each ship of the Romans and they killed them and they tortured them and they beat them. And this was a victory, an excellent victory for the believers at that time. After this, the Romans, they always ran away from the believers. This made for a position for the Muslims to go and attack Kustantunia, to attack Istanbul. And it was during this time that Amir Muawiyah made Yazid, his son Abi Sufyan, he made him the leader that go and take the Muslims and go and battle. Great companions were in that battle. Great companions uh, took part in it. And fast forward time is short but great companions went into the battle they went into Constantinople into Istanbul and they were battling with the Roman Roman Emperor and were against the Romans and at this time the great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala you know who Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala is who knows Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu if I'm correct is that companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam people wanted him to stay in their house people wanted to keep the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his house so at that time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever's outside, whoever's home, my camel will stop, I will stay in that home. It was Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The great companion. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that one. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in his house in Medina. He would stay, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stay on the bottom floor. Abu Ayyub Ansari would stay on the top floor. He was my mani Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such a great companion. Abu Ayyub Ansari was also in this battle. It is said that Abu, Abu, Ayyub, Abu Ayyub Ansari fell ill. <coughs> Yazid came to him and he said to Abu Ayyub, what's the problem? Abu Ayyub said that I'm feeling very ill. I feel that this is, I'm going to die here. And if I was to die here in the land of the enemy, then make sure you bury me right in the midst of the enemies. Right in the land of the enemies where the Roman Empire is, you know, outside the fort of Constantinople. Bury me there. It so happened that Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala who lost his life during this battle. And whilst the Muslims were burying him, Allahu Akbar, the miraculous occurrence, karamat of Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. History testifies that as soon as they finished burying him, light emanated from his grave and the whole earth, the whole sky lit up with light. So this light emanated from his grave and the whole sky lit up with light. When the non-believers on the other side of the fort, when they saw this, they sent a person to go and inquire as to what happened. You know, where did this bonfire come from? So when this non-believer came, and they witnessed this light emanating from the grave of Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he went back and told the people that this is what's happening. And a group of people thought to themselves that if this is the rank and the status Allah Akbar. If this is the rank and the status of a student of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then how truthful will the deen of Allah be when they witness this miraculous occurrence that group of non-believers accepted Islam. Allah. Many things happened in Islam flourished during the time of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. There was peace, there was tranquility, there was justice everywhere at the time of Amir Muawiyah. He was loved by the people, he loved the people. And as Imam Bukhari relates in his Sahih, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best leader is that leader who loves his people and in return the people love him. He was loved by the people, he loved the people and it was the motto of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. It was his motto that I will not use my sword where my whip suffices. I will not use my sword where my whip suffices. And 
I will not use my whip where my tongue suffices. And he said that even if there was relationship between me and people, me and the people, even if the relationship was, you know, a strand of one hair, you know, a strand of a hair, if there was only that much relationship between me and the people, I will never let it sever. If they were to pull and tug at it, I will relax my grip. And if I and if I was to relax my grip, then these people would pull at it. In other words, Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu was very just and Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu was very tolerant. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Prince of Ghassan was sent by Amir by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the go and fi- fetch a package, Amir Muawiyah was sent with him. Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu at that time did not have any shoes, so he requested the Prince of Ghassan that you know either let me borrow your shoes to walk or either let me sit behind you on the horse the Prince of Ghassan he insulted Amir Muawiyah and he said do you really think I'm gonna let you sit on my horseback do you really think I'm gonna give you my shoes to borrow borrow out of pride and arrogance Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu, so much obedience and love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, fulfilling the request of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he walked six miles on burning the burning hot desert of Mecca he walked six miles Six miles. He walked there. When he came back, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inquired from him as to what has happened. He mentioned the whole incident. It was at this time that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ahlamu min ummati Muawiyah." That Muawiyah is the most tolerant. Muawiyah is the most forbearing from my ummah. Allahu. The most tolerant in my ummah. Muawiyah radhiyallahu taala nu. And coincidentally, 30 years later, when Muawiyah radhiyallahu taala nu was the leader, at that time the Prince of Ghassan. When he was captured by the army of Amir Muawiyah and he was brought into the court of Amir Muawiyah, Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu, but the prince of Ghassan feared that Muawiyah will take revenge from me, from what I had done to him 30 years earlier in return. So forgiving, so tolerant, so forbearing. Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu forgave him and he also showered him with gifts. And the prince of Ghassan, when he saw the character of a student of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was so taken back he was so influenced by this character of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu, that there and then in the court of Amir Muawiyah he accepted Islam. Allah. Such a great companion. How much shall I say and what, how much can I say about the services of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu. Just to finish, Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu, he had immense love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is why when Amir Muawiyah passed away at the age of 78, we found that during his time, like I mentioned, Islam flourished, there was peace and security everywhere. There was many conquests that took place during his time. Many lands in South Africa, Sudan, you know, uh, after the Egyptian deserts, Sudan, Tunis, Tunisia, all these lands were conquered during the time. In fact, even up till Afghanistan, they were conquered during the time of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu. And after conquering Afghanistan and Kabul, the Muslims started, you know, marching into India. This all happened at the time of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala nu. But when he was dying at the age of 78, he had immense love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He learned of a person in Basra who resembled Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he wrote to the governor of Basra and he said to them, that send this person with izzat, with honor, with dignity, send this person to me. When this person was born in the court of Amir Muawiyah, Amir Muawiyah got up, went up to the person who resembled Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in his facial features, he went up to him, he kissed him on his forehead, he respected him, he honored him, he made him wear a robe of honor and he made him sit next to him and he lavished him with so many gifts. This is how much love he had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This same companion, this same person who resembled Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when um, Anas radiallahu ta'ala anu would see him, he would start crying because he would bring back flashbacks and memories from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had so much love, intense love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Amir Muawiyah says that once I was, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave me his clothes. He gave me a piece of cloth and he said, Muawiyah, this is for you. And I have kept this and I have safeguarded this. And once I cut the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I kept some part of that hair. Once, I, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cut some of his nails and I kept them nails. He said, oh people, when you bury me, then bury me in this coffin, this cloth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you bury me, then place the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the nails of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in my mouth, in my nose and in my ears. I have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that through this, through the beloved of Allah, through the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through this act Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me on the day of judgment. 
such immense love for Rasulullah sallallahu My friends, this is the life. I gave you glimpses from the life of Abir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. There's so much to say, but time doesn't allow. But what we need to remember is Amir Muawiyah is a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's amongst the high ranked and high status companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Allahu Akbar, Katibul Wahi, the scribe of divine revelation, Hal al Mu'mineen, the uncle of the believers. Why? Because Ummi Habiba is a uh, sister was uh, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was azwajuhum mahatuhum the mothers of the believers so therefore his sister is the mother of the believers so he is khala he is mamu therefore he is the mamu he is the uncle of the believers he is the uncle of the ummah uh, Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala we find today that many people they criticize and they speak ill of Amir Muawiyah you know Umar bin Khattab uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala umma, you know Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala there's so much to say how these people pay tribute to Amir Muawiyah radiallahu but I'll just end by saying that Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, Imam Nasai was once asked about Amir Muawiyah that what do you think of him Amir Muawiyah, uh, Imam Nasai rahimahullah ta'ala said that Islam is like a house with a door and the door of Islam is the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and a person who harms the companions only does so a person who speaks ill and criticizes the companions only does so to attack Islam like a person who knocks on a door he only knocks on that door because he wants to enter the house. In the same way, a person who attacks and criticizes and speaks ill of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he only does this because he wants to attack and speak ill and criticize and abuse the beloved companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sees Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu as the weak link. He attacks Amir Muawiyah. So in return, the way is clear for the people to come after that go and attack the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu My friends, we should fear Allah. Fear Allah from speaking ill or even thinking ill of the companions. There was a man, Imam Saraqsi writes in his Mabsood that there was a man by the name of Abu Fa Muhammad, uh, Muhammad bin Fadl. And Muhammad bin Fadl, he would have ill thoughts about Amir Muawiyah. He would speak ill of Amir Muawiyah. One night he went to sleep and he had a dream. What does he see in his dream? He sees that there is you know, long strands of hair coming out from his mouth and when he is walking, he is trampling on him. And there is blood that is pouring out from his mouth, pouring out from his tongue. So these long strands of hair coming down from out of his mouth and he is, whilst he's walking, he's trampling on them. And there's blood pouring out from his tongue. He wakes up in horror. He sends somebody to the mobbid. They go and find out what's the tabir. Of this was the interpretation of this dream. So the interpreter said that definitely you have ill thoughts and you speak ill of a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is why you saw this dream. There and then he does toba to Allah and he repents to Allah the Almighty. Allah, my friends, is an undisputed reality. There's absolutely no doubt in the fact that the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, many of them, they had. You know, differences amongst themselves. You know, there are differences amongst themselves. And at times, these differences escalated into conflicts. It happened, you know. But the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he order us? He said to us, as Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala mentioned it, ashabi That when my companions are mentioned, then maintain silence. Speak only of their good qualities. Speak only of their good traits. Speak only of their sacrifices for Islam. Do not utter a bad word about the companions. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered us to do this. Why? To prevent any ill feelings and any ill thoughts arising concerning the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these people today we find who use all these narrations from history to attack the companions. You know, if you really sit down and look at these narrations, you will find that either these narrations are unfounded, they don't exist. Or either they are unreliable narrations of history, or either they have been related and narrated by notorious liars. By notorious liars. And as I mentioned earlier on, respect to elders, we have clear verse of the Quran, Allah saying that the Sahaba have been forgiven, they have been granted Jannah by Allah, all of them. There's a hadith, clear, co explicit narrations of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concerning the greatness of the companions. Then we have the ijma, the consensus of the whole ummah about the greatness of the companions. All this on one side, how can a person rely on these unreliable, unfounded narrations that have been related by notorious Rafzi liars? How can a person relate to them? How, a, how, how can a person use them 
as a basis to attack the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu And one final point to mention is this, that the, com the status and the rank that the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa attained was through the companionship, through their suhba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, it is not possible for a person to come after, to research, to go and research historical texts in order to find out what the status and the rank of the companions is. Why? Because these are issues of aqidah. These are the issues of beliefs. And when it comes to aqidah, when it comes to Islamic beliefs, and when it comes to Islamic principles, then history does not have no say. You look at the Quran, you look at the Sunnah, you look at Ijma. This is what you look at when it comes to Qiyas. Well, sorry, when it comes to uh, Aqaid, when it comes to beliefs, you look at verses of the Quran, you look at mutawatir narrations. So therefore, it's not possible for a person to look back in history and say, oh, this companion fought with this companion, therefore he must be a bad person, he must be a good person. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to us, إِذَا ذُكِرَ أَصْحَابِ فَمْسِكُ When my companions are mentioned, then maintain silence, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the order of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the order of Allah is, Rabbana ghafir lana, he taught us a dua. Rabbana ghafir lana, wa li ikhwanina alladheena sabakuna bil iman. O Allah, forgive us and forgive our brethren who preceded us in iman. Who preceded us in iman? The Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. O Allah, forgive us and forgive them. Wa la tajal fi qulubina ghilla lil ladheena amanu. O Allah, do not place any rancor, do not place any ill thoughts, any ill feelings in our hearts regarding these uh, brethren of ours who preceded us in iman. This is the dua that is taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I urge all you brothers, inshallah, all of you make intention that we will honor the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah further elevates the ranks of the companions and Allah elevates the rank of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I urge all you brothers, go get a good book, get a good biography of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a good biography of the companions of, uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or go to the ulama, mashallah, you have many learned ulama here and learn about these companions. Then you will appreciate the deen. You will appreciate by looking Looking at the sacrifices that these companions made, you will appreciate and you will value the deen of Allah. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah alayhi salatullah wa alihi wa al-ahibba. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. Wa alihi